Uh, today we're going to discuss the difference between preferences and investments. Right? We're told early on in the text, actually in chapter 2, that, that we're not to deny our physical experiences in this world. In fact, Jesus tells us that it would be practically impossible to, to do so and would be an inappropriate use of, of denial. Uh, the reason for that being, even though the body is an illusion and everything we experience as a body, both, both emotionally and physically, is an illusion, nonetheless, we believe we're bodies. Uh, we believe that we're students of a book called The Course of Miracles. Uh, dictated uh, by by Jesus to Helen. So everything about the Course is part of the illusion. It, it, it's perceptual, it's dualistic, uh, and we're certainly not asked to deny any of this. And again, we're not asked to deny our experiences. Rather, what we're asked to do is to let these experiences come from our right mind rather than our wrong mind. Okay, so again, this is not, we're, we're not talking about letting go of our bodies. Uh, that will happen at the very, very end of the process when we recognize that the entire world is a dream, including our individual experience. So it, it's helpful to, to speak on a practical level of the difference between having an investment in something or having a, pres a preference. And let me, just let me give a, a personal example of this, uh, which kind of makes the point very well. Uh, when, uh, when we were children, my brother and I, uh, my parents uh, and us had taken a, a trip uh, to to Canada, and uh, we arrived very very late at night. It was a Sunday night. I think it was after eleven o'clock in Montreal, and uh, we were in the motel about ready to go go to sleep. And my mother realized she did not have a piece of fruit. And for my mother, it was part of her her, her nighttime time ritual that she could not go to sleep without having s some piece of fruit—an apple, or an orange, a pear, or something. And she she was horrified that she did not have this piece of fruit. So my father and I went out. It was after 11 o'clock at night. Uh, this was a time when you did not have 7-Elevens or convenience stores. Nothing was open. And I remember driving through the streets of Montreal. We didn't know where we were going, of course, and trying to find my mother a piece of fruit. And it, it, we tried in vain. And so we eventually came back to the motel empty-handed. And my poor mother had to go to sleep without a piece of fruit. All right. That's an investment. All right. And when, when you say, I cannot s survive, I cannot go to sleep, I cannot be happy, I cannot be at peace unless something happens. And this is just another way of talking about special relationships and special investments. A preference, on the hand, is something else. Yes, my preference would be to have a piece of fruit before I go to sleep. But if I don't have a piece of fruit, it's not the end of the world. Yes, my preference would be to have dessert in a restaurant and have vanilla ice cream instead of strawberry. But they're all out of vanilla ice cream. So if I have an investment, I may storm out of the, the restaurant, go to the nearest uh, Ben and Jerry's or whatever, and, and have, have myself vanilla ice cream. Uh, and in, a preference would simply say, yes, I'd like to have vanilla ice cream, but if you don't have that, what do you have? Right? Th that's a, a, a more sensible, common sense, and a more loving kind approach to how we live in this world. Yes, my preference would be to be with people who think I'm a good person rather than to be with a person who doesn't think I'm a good person. Well, but if I have an investment, then I will avoid all people who don't like me. I will take offense at anything negative anybody says about me, and I will find it very difficult to live in the human race, because most people either will not think I'm, I'm the center of the universe, as I think I am, and they will not treat me as such. So, while well, again, it is fine to have preferences. In fact, one cannot be in a body without a preference. We all have preferences for the color shirts and blouses and sweaters and slacks and, and skirts that we would wear. But that doesn't mean that, again, that, that the color that we prefer is the only color in the world for us or the best color in the world for us. It simply means that's what makes me feel comfortable. So what we want to do is be aware of the investments we have in things having to be different Again, it's another word for specialness. Things having to be different, and then, and then running over everybody, taking advantage of other people, using, abusing, victimized people, so our needs are met. And, and when we become aware of this, even if in its simplest form, seemingly innocuous form, that's when we want to ask Jesus for help, that we shift our identification from this as an investment to simply being a preference. And if things don't work out one way, then they'll work out another way, and regardless of the externalization of my neediness, I could be at peace. So regardless of my having vanilla or chocolate or strawberry ice cream, uh, regardless of my, my having a certain color, uh, wearing a certain color, um, I could still be at peace. 
regardless of people acting towards me in the way that I like or demand, I could still be loving, I could still be kind. So the key in everything is, is, is to choose the gentleness of a preference over, over and above the, the hardness and the sometimes even cruelty of insisting on meeting our investments. It's the, the decision not only between kindness and gentleness and hardness and attack, uh, between the ego and Jesus, it's really the difference between choosing heaven or hell.